Welcome to Electron Online. In our next example on mechanical engineering, we're going to try to find the moment in three dimensions about point A. So the objective here is to find the moment about point A. Let me show you what we have here. We have a platform right there that is 40 inches above the ground, and we have a ramp, and the ramp fans out here. So the ramp is not the same one here, but fans out towards the ground. So this is a sloped ramp going from zero from the ground 40 inches to the platform. Notice that the distance from the edge of the platform to the edge of the ramp at the end here is 24 inches beyond that line. The ramp in the uh, horizontal direction is 120 inches long, and then this height is 40 inches. There's a post here that's 92 inches tall, and then there's a wire on top of the post that holds this ramp right here. And let's say that there's a tension of 360 pounds on this rope right here. And we're trying to find the moment about point A that this force causes pulling at this corner right there. All right, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to realize that the force will be in this direction. So there's the force F. And of course, it's going to have an X, a Y, and a Z component. We can only find the X and Y, Z component if we find the direction cosine. So we need to find the direction cosine of that force. We also need to find the the uh, position vector, and let me use a different color for that, position vector from the point about which we're trying to find the moment to the point where the force is acting. So here's our position vector. Let's call that position vector R. And of course, we need to find the X, Y, and Z components of that position vector as well. We know that the moment about point A, the moment about point A is equal to the cross product or the vector product of the position vector with the force so this is going to be equal to this matrix of I, J, and K, the X, Y, and Z component of the position vector, and the X, the Y, and the Z components of the force. So how do we find those? Well, to find the X, Y, and Z components of the position vector, that's relatively easy. So what we can do here is, so if we assume that that's the origin, so to speak, we can find the x, y, z component relative to point A. So that means that R, and let me write over here, the R vector can be written as, in the x direction, notice that this here, and maybe I should use a different color for that as well. I use green. So let's say that this here is the x direction. This here would be the y direction. And in this direction here, that would be the z direction. So that's the x, y, and z direction on our coordinate system. So to find the position vector r, in the x direction, we go from here to negative 24. That's a minus 24 in the x direction. And I'll just use the unit vector i. For the y direction, we go from there down a down 40 inches, that would be minus 40 in the y direction. And for z, we go 120 inches in the z direction, so that's plus 120 z. So we have the position vector that makes it easy. So this is equal to the vector i, j, and k. And so here we have a minus 24. Notice this is in inches, minus 40, and a plus 120. We still need to find the x, y, and z uh, magnitudes of the force vector. So let's find the direction cosines. So to do that, we need to first start out with the length. So direction cosines will be proportional to the length of this string relative to the x, y, and z direction. So let's find the length. The length is equal to the square root of the f sub x plus the f sub y plus the f sub z quantity squared, of course. And so that would be the relative length of those components. So that would be equal to the square root of the f in the x direction. So we go from this point to this point. In the x direction, that will also be 24 inches. So that's 24 squared plus the y direction. We take the 92 plus the 40. That's 132 squared. Plus the z direction will still be 120. So that's 120 squared. So what is that equal to? All right, so I have 24, and we square that, plus 132, we square that, plus 120, we square that, equals, take the square root of that, and that's equal to 180. 
Okay, so to find the direction cosines, let's say that alpha, beta, and gamma are the direction cosines. And so that would be for the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. So we can say that alpha, therefore, would be equal to the magnitude in the x direction. So it would be a minus 24 divided by 180. For the beta in the y direction, that would be a positive 132, 132 over 180. And in the z direction, so we have a, a positive 120 divided by 180. Now let's say we get the signs correct. Notice that the force is acting, oh, be careful here. I gotta be careful. The force is acting from here to here. So that would be in the positive x direction, so that's a positive. It's acting upwards, that's a positive y direction, but it's acting in this direction, so that's a minus 120 over 180. I want to make sure I get the correct signs on that because it's related to the direction of the force. So it's, the force is acting in a positive x direction, a positive y direction, but a negative z direction, so therefore those are the correct signs. And so if I multiply that, that, that means that the force in the x direction is equal to the direction cosine times 360 pounds. The force in the y direction is equal to the direction cosine times 360 pounds. And direction, the force in the z direction is equal to the direction cosine times 360 pounds. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out the 360 pounds and put in the direction cosines right here. So put the equal sign. So it would be equal to 360 times the direction cosine for the x direction, which is 24 over 180, plus, whoop, I don't have to write plus, it's still a plus, 132 over 180, and a minus 120 over 180. So here are the direction cosines for the force in the x, the y, and the z direction, multiplied times the total force on the string, and that gives me the proper values for x, f sub x, f sub y, and F sub Z. Now I'm ready to find the moment about point A. So the moment about point A is equal to 360 times. I take the I unit vector and I multiply that times the product of those two minus the product of those two. So it would be uh, minus 40 times a minus 120 over 180 minus 120 times 132 over 180. And that would be the moment in the x direction would be minus j times, would be this number times this number, that would be a minus 24 times a minus 120 over 180 minus this number times this number, which is 120 times 24 over 180. And finally, plus k times this number times this number, which is a minus 24, times 132 over 180, minus this number times this number, which is a minus 40, times 24 over 180. All right, so the moment about point A is equal to, so now let's find the x, y, and z components of the moment. I'll need my pen, put it right there. So starting over here, that would be 40 times 120 divided by 180, that would be positive. And that would be minus the quantity 120 times 132 divided by 180 equals, and I need to multiply that times 360. So times 360 equals Oh, and one more thing that I remember here is that this is in inches, and I probably wanted to, to convert that to feet, so I'm going to divide this by 12 to convert from inches to feet, so divide by 12 equals, and that gives me min minus 1,840 foot-pounds in the I direction. All right, now I go for the middle term. So this number times this number, minus times minus gives me positive, so it's 24 times 120 divided by 180 
So to the positive 16, I subtract from that minus 120 times 24 divided by 180, and that looks awfully familiar here, equals, it's zero. So it would be plus zero j. And finally, I go for the third term. So I multiply this number times that number, it gives me negative. So 24 times 132, negative, divided by 180, equals, and I've, so minus times the minus is plus, so plus 40 times 24 divided by 180 equals, and I multiply that times 360 and divide by 12, and I get a minus 368 foot-pounds in the k direction. And there, oh, and I need a vector symbol on that because the moment is a vector, and there's the answer that is the moment that the force pulling on this corner of the ramp relative to the pivot right here at A, that is the moment of this force relative to point A, and that's the answer. So we have an X term, we have a Z term, we have zero for the Y term, and it's 840 foot-pounds and a minus 368 foot-pounds for the Z direction. And that's how it's done.